to St. Louis this week. Oh, yeah, she's doing good. Okay. What's the name again? Brady Clark. Brady Clark. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's remember these. I want to thank everybody that uh, uh, took part and went and, uh, with the youth uh, down to Winter Jam in Nashville Friday night. Uh, we had a good time down there. I wish I'd listened to Patty and more earplugs, but I didn't. Uh, it was real loud, uh, but it was good. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, some parts of it I, I didn't really understand, but that, that's okay. Uh, some, of the words, some of those singers I can't understand. They don't, you know, they don't try to me. But, uh, anyway, uh, if the kids loved it, there was probably, I don't know, uh, how many floors? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we had 15, but how many kids do you think was there? Probably oh, 5,000. 6,000? Yeah, something like that. There was a lot of kids. <laughs> and they understood it. Yeah, they understood it. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, it was a good time. We, we got out late. It was 11 o'clock by the time the concert was over. And uh, we got back to church here at 2 in the morning. Uh, so I was more out. Anyway, that's too uh, that's too late for me, y'all. I'm an old woman. Uh, I, mean, I survived. I did good. All right. Uh, don't forget now, uh, coming up, uh, let's see, we got something coming up right around the corner. I can't remember what it was. It's not written here. Uh, it's a youth fundraiser, but that's only in March. So. But folks, we're, we're right around the corner. We, uh, we're only about five weeks out from Easter. Right. Uh, so men, y'all be getting ready for the for the Easter sunrise breakfast. Uh, and, hey, we got some good cooks back there in R6. You guys need to be here at five o'clock that morning on Easter morning. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to cook. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, and you get to sample it as you cook, so yeah, that's the best part. <laughs> so remember that. All right, let's remember all of these. I don't know about y'all, but I just, I just want to worship God today. Uh, I'm glad to be in his house this morning, a place where I can worship. Uh, folks, you could be in a third world country uh, begging for a place to worship God. Uh, we're so blessed. Uh, I do want to mention uh, this lady today. She's here. Uh, they told me to be sure and announce this. Uh, I don't know if, that's, if, she, if she wants gifts or I'm, I'm not sure what she wants. Uh, but it says to announce Sharon's birthday. Alan told me he was going to get her a roll of duct tape and put over her mouth. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. <laughs> All right. Yes, we've been hurting. It's also Marvin's birthday and my son's face is birthday. Is it really?
she said Shirley Clark. Not doing well at all. That Shirley's not. Well, she was here. She comes by sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah her and Cody. Yeah. I don't know, what, I don't know if she's got a congestive heart or what it is. Something going on with her heart. She has some heart problems. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I knew she had some problems. But I used to visit her quite often. <coughs> yes. I just want to say thank you to everybody for your prayers. Yeah. I, I do appreciate them. I did them. Uh, and, and that comment about the duct tape wasn't as bad as the yeah. five bitch made like about hmm? the phone call. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> If y'all want to shop, just go over and sit by Sherry. When that thing goes off, you'll shop. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to say that I'm very happy that Sherry is doing well. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you remember when I came to my niece like last year and I gave her a report that she went to rehab? Yes. Well, now she's in Mary, Illinois, close to her brother, and my brother lives in Clinton. And I was talking to my brother yesterday, and he goes, It's like, he goes, I can't believe that she's that close to me now. Yeah. So just remember Brittany and okay. uh, she keeps continue to do good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love it when, when people in addiction come and show me their uh, one year sobriety for one or something like that. And, uh, that's, a, that's a big step for a lot of people. Folks. It really is. All right. <clears throat> Nothing else. We'll get started. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you. Lord, we just want to worship you. God, just uh, give us that free spirit today, God. Just let loose and worship God. And, uh, Lord, uh, as I preach this morning, God, I pray that your word will go forth. And God, that you would light the fires of revival in our soul today. Help us, God, to worship this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Good to see all of you this morning. I hope you come ready to praise. I hope you come expecting this morning. Y'all, we need to come expecting uh, and just hope that the Spirit of God will move. Yeah. Uh, nothing that would make me happier than just see the Spirit of God fall upon this place right. today. Amen. And, uh, man, it just uh, gives me chills sometimes. But uh, we're going to start out this morning. We're going we gonna to get country on you. And uh, we're going to start out with I'll Fly Away. <clears throat>
reminded me while ago of a, a movie. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it or not. I've seen it. It's called The Hill. Has anybody seen that? Uh, this, uh, we were talking about that a minute. If you haven't seen the movie The Hill, uh, you need to go watch it or rent it or whatever. It's on Netflix. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful movie. Through it all.
and set my soul on fire. Uh, turn with me to Luke chapter 24. Y'all be praying about that. Uh, praying for revival. I, I think we need it, folks. We really do. I say, you know, all, all the years that I've been here, <clears throat> that we've been in revival for years and years. <clears throat> but maybe it'd be good if you heard somebody else talk about it as we preach. Luke chapter 24. Verse 32. I'm just going to read one verse. Luke chapter 24, verse 32. Luke 24, 32. Are you there? And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened to us the scriptures, Lord Jesus, come and walk with us today. Come and talk to us today. Come and open the scriptures to us today. That our hearts might burn within us. And we would want more and more and not be willing to quit today. Oh God, thank you for your sweet spirit today. Lord, I pray that as your spirit moves, God, through the hearts of your people, that you would revive us this morning, kindle a little fire deep down in our soul that would start burning brighter and brighter. Thank you, Lord, for that sweet spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Sometimes... Sometimes I feel uh, kind of out of sorts. Anybody ever feel like that? Um, I feel like the old preacher one time. He, you know, he, 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 old stray dog showed up in his yard. And his wife said, honey, he said, you're going to have to get rid of that dog. He said, okay, honey, I'll take care of it. And being compassionate, he didn't want to kill the dog. So he took the dog about a mile down the road and turned it loose, hoping somebody would take it in. He didn't know whose dog it was. When he got back home, the dog was sitting on the porch. <laughs> His wife told us, now, honey, I told you, you've got to get rid of that dog. Said, okay, honey, I'll take care of it. Y'all know how that is. Okay, honey, I'll take care of it. He got the dog, loaded him in the pickup, took him five miles away. When he got home, he's sitting on the porch. Here comes the dog. Got up on the porch with him, just sat there. And his wife come out and seen that dog, Gary. She said, honey, I told you, you have got to get rid of that dog. <laughs> Here's the way I feel sometimes. He loaded that dog up, and he went 20 miles and dropped that dog off. And then he called his wife. He says, honey, has that dog showed up on the porch yet? And she said, yeah, he's sitting right here. And we'll send him over here. I forgot how to get home already. <laughs> That's the way I am sometimes. I forget the way home. Today, I read that verse. And it said, didn't our hearts burn within us? Um, this is, these two individuals... Uh, we call this the road to Emmaus. Uh, if you read John chapter 19 and verse uh, 32, I think it is, or 35, somewhere in there, when Jesus is on the cross, it says that Mary is standing there at the foot of the cross with her sister named Mary, the wife of Cleopas. And here it mentions Cleopas walking on the road, which makes me assume that this is his wife Mary walking home with him. Now what's going on here is Jesus has gone to the cross. He's been beaten. He's been nailed to the cross. He was laid up on the cross. He died on Friday. On Friday night, they took him down. Friday evening at 6, they took him off the cross. They put him in a borrowed tomb. 
And for three days he lay in that tomb. And on Sunday morning, uh, resurrection morning, he came up out of the grave and, and was yeah. not seen uh, for a little while there. And, and everybody is wondering, where did he go? What's happened to our Jesus? Cleopas and Mary were so disheartened and so disappointed because they have killed their Savior. Many of you have been down that road because many of us have seen discouragement, disappointment in our lives, things that have happened and we don't know how to fix it, we can't fix it ourselves, and sometimes we just want to walk away and go home. Yeah. And say, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to think about it. I don't even want to think about that anymore. Mary and Cleopas were on their way home, walking seven and a half miles to Emmaus from Jerusalem. And they're so discouraged. And they're talking about the events of what just took place. And they're trying to make sense of the cross and the resurrection. They, they don't really understand what happened there. They, they, didn't, they didn't have the Bible to read like you and I have got today. They were trying to figure it out themselves uh, with nobody to tell them. And they were just second guessing everything they had seen. We saw him on the cross. We saw him put him in the grave. But we didn't see him come out of the tomb. Where is he? We have lost our leader. The one that said he was going to change the world. By his power. They're walking the road of discouragement. Some of you have been on that road of discouragement. Disappointment. Heartaches. Things have happened in your life where you were so disappointed and you were so uh, discouraged. Uh, you didn't know what to do. But thanks be to God, you didn't stay that. We get disappointed. They had lost the one that they loved the most. Some of you here this morning have lost the ones you love the most. And you walk that road of discouragement. You walk that road of disappointment. But somewhere along that road, something happened. Something happened. Mary, Cleopas and Mary are walking uh, Come here, Dennis. Uh, come here, Robert. Now, this is Cleopas. This is the ugliest Mary I've ever seen. <laughs> there, 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 now, y'all, y'all just hold hands there. Y'all, y'all are walking down the road of discouragement. <laughs> And they're talking about the events, and all of a sudden, somebody comes up behind them and says, Hey, what are y'all talking about? <coughs> and y'all look at this guy, and you say, Well, where are you been? Ain't you heard what's happened? Don't you know that Jesus died and was uh, in the grave? Don't, we can't find him. Uh, don't you know what's happened? And they're just looking at me, looking at Jesus like, you ain't heard. You haven't heard. We, man, we're, we're, we're just discouraged. We, we're just uh, trying to sort this thing out. And Jesus begins, y'all go ahead and sit down. Jesus begins to walk that seven and a half mile journey with Cleopas and Mary. He's telling them, they, he, said, he lets them tell the story. He lets them tell uh, what they did to Jesus. And, and not knowing that it was Jesus the whole time. But then, as they walk that seven and a half mile journey, they begin to tell him all the things that took place. And then Jesus said, well, let me tell you about this Jesus. And it said he took the scriptures and he began to expound the scripture. He began to preach himself to these two people. For seven and a half miles, listen to me, for seven and a half miles, he preached Jesus. Amen. 
Let me say that again. For seven and a half miles, I dare say you wouldn't walk one mile with me wow. with me preaching Jesus yeah. right in your ear the whole time. You turn around and say, I've had enough. I'm going to the house. I don't want to hear anymore. For seven and a half miles, they listened to the sermon that Jesus had to preach. But all the time he was preaching, something began to happen on the inside. Their soul began to stir. A fire was kindled down in their soul. As he was telling them about this Christ that they crucified, the one that they had lost. Yeah. See, you'll find when the fire burns in you, uh, number one, you'll find companionship. Mm -hmm. On your road of disappointment, you'll find that Christ loves to come alongside you. And begins to whisper in your ear and say, it's going to be all right. Don't worry. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm going to light a fire in you. And it's going to, one day, it's going to, it may not be burning very right right now. But one day, it's going to burn with an eternal candle in you that's never going to be put out. And as a matter of fact, you and I are going to a place where we won't need any light. We won't need that light in our heart because our light is going to be the very Son of God in the place called heaven. Yeah. As they walk along, they find the companionship. It says, Jesus drew near them and walked with them. Many times, folks, well, listen to me this morning. Many times, Jesus, on your road of disappointment, he has come up behind you or beside you yeah. or in front of you and you didn't recognize him because he sent himself in the form of somebody else but he's there and he's wanting you to know don't be discouraged, don't be disappointed. I know it's a long road to victory but bless be God, I'm still Jesus. I haven't changed. I've still got victory in me and I'll show you victory if you'll just let me walk with you. For seven and a half miles, they found the companionship. Uh, you see, companionship is what... When we come together on a Sunday morning like this, what are we looking for? We're looking for companionship. We're looking for somebody to worship our God with us. And, and uh, folks, listen, you may be here this morning and you may think that Jesus has just uh, disappeared and that he's not alive today and he doesn't mean much to you because your fire hasn't been kindled. It's burned down to just a little flicker. But I got good news for you. Yeah. That light, if it's still burning inside of you, that's a revival spirit. That's the spirit that he wants to set your soul on fire for him and if you'll just keep walking with him and talking with him and listen to his word he'll rekindle that fire in your soul Amen. he will and so we find companionship not only is there companionship but there's clarity when the fire burns you'll find clarity in his word. You may not understand that Bible you're holding. You may not understand the words of Jesus that are written in red. You may not understand all the stories, including this one. You may not understand a lot of stuff that's in the scripture. And believe me, I've been preaching for 40 years and there's still a lot of stuff in that book I don't understand. And I dare say there's a, every one of us sitting here this morning, there's a lot of stuff that we still don't know. But one day, one day, he's going to bring clarity to our minds. When we reach that place called heaven, it's all going to become clear to us. And he's going to explain it. And that, I'm telling you, you think this is a seven and a half mile uh, preaching sermon? He's been preaching to me for 40 years. Amen. I've been walking with him on the road for 40 years. Yeah. And many times on that road, I've been disappointed. I've been discouraged. I've been knocked down. I've got, I, listen, all kinds of things have happened. But every time I get on that road, God doesn't leave me there. He comes in and taps me on the shoulder. Hey, have you forgotten who I was? Have you forgotten what I did back yonder? You ain't here by yourself. You're walking with me now. I don't know who you're walking with, but I'm still walking with Jesus yeah, yeah. every day. Oh, I get discouraged, I do. There's a constraining. 
Notice what the in those verses. It said, after Jesus expounded the scriptures, and he said, after they got clarity, it said there was a constraining. They constrained him to come in. Oh, I wish you could get a hold of that today. They begged Jesus to come in to their home. That's what he's saying. They begged him. Why? Because they heard the word of God preached with clarity. He expounded the scriptures to them. And they said, don't quit now. He, he made out like he was just going to keep on walking. And they said, wait a minute. We ain't had enough. We want some more. We need some more God. How many of you here this morning need just a little more gospel and ain't willing for God to give up on you yet? That's me and you. We need a little more of Jesus in our lives. Don't quit on God because he ain't never quit on you. And if you have to, beg him to come where you are. Beg him to come and, and uh, expound the scriptures to you. Make it clear what he's saying to you. I'll tell you what he was saying. He was saying to Clavis and Barry, he said, boys and girls, there's only one way to heaven. I'm the way. It's through the blood and there's no other way to cross. And you have to come to the cross of Calvary. If you're going to see heaven, you've got to first meet at the cross and you've got to understand who I am and why I died. I died for you so that you can have a way to go to heaven. That's right. He took our sins upon him. Yeah. They got clarity. There was a constraining. And then there was a communion. <laughs> oh, listen. When they got to the house, they constrained him to come in. They begged him, Lord, don't leave us. They didn't know who he was yet. Right. I don't know who you are, but you know more about Jesus than anybody we've ever met. And they said, please come into the house and, and have uh, supper with us. They begged Jesus to come into their house so that they could hear just a little more of the word of God. Oh, some of y'all are sitting here looking at me. You sit down at the supper table. And sometimes we forget that God is anywhere around. Sometimes we can be out eating or so even, even at home. I don't, I don't know what y'all do. At home, but Patty and I don't ever eat a meal. I don't care where we are, unless we pray first. Amen. That's just common ground with us. I believe God expects us to do that, folks. And and so they went into the house. And Jesus was going to go by. And they said, no. They begged him. We want to hear more. We want to more, hear more of Jesus. Now, we're going to have this revival this spring. And I need you to have that attitude when you come to revival. It may go one night. It may go three nights. It may go six nights. I don't know what we're going to do. But we need to be in unity and say, I want more of Jesus. It doesn't matter about my life. It, I'm going to give up that week. I'm going to sell out for Jesus that whole week. And here the word of God because I need it folks and so when Jesus came into the house they prepared a meal and Jesus now this is communion it said Jesus took the bread and he broke the bread but he did something before that he prayed and said father Bless this meal, bless this bread, and open their eyes. Because they don't know who I am. And he said, when he broke the bread, their eyes were opened. Yeah. Why is that? Well, I'm glad you asked, I'll tell you. You see, this whole time that he's walking with them for seven and a half miles, they didn't recognize him. They didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. They hadn't been following him long enough to know his voice. And so they're so longing to know where Jesus went. They, in their hearts, their hearts were burning from the scripture that he had, it, it gave them. And now he, he's breaking bread. And when he broke the bread, it said their eyes were open. Now picture this with me. 
as he broke that bread, he broke it and he gave it to them. And for the first time, they saw the holes and the blood on his hands. They saw those nail scarred hands as he broke that bread. And they realized that this is Jesus himself. Standing in our house. He had just preached to us for seven and a half miles. And though, listen, when you preach the blood, when any preacher preaches the blood, Jesus shows up. It, it was there, those two people saw the blood of Jesus and they recognized Jesus for who he was. Anytime that a preacher gets up and he preaches the blood of Jesus, you ought to be able to recognize that it's God. Amen. It's about the blood. It's all about the blood. We find clear clarity. We find constraint. We find communion. Then they recognize him. And now watch this. As Jesus, when they saw his hands, he raised his hands up and he broke that bread. And they saw those nail-scarred hands. The Bible says, you read it, that Jesus disappeared just like that. And then they knew. And that's why I started out with that verse. That's where it comes in. It said they looked at each other and they knew. There was no doubt in their mind who it was. And they looked at each other and said, did not our hearts burn within us as he prophesied, as he spoke to us? Did, wasn't there something? Was something burning in your heart that whole trip? Was something burning in your heart? And every, both of them said, yeah, something was going on. I just couldn't figure it out. But now we know. We have just been in the presence of Jesus. But wait a minute. Didn't he die on the cross? Didn't they put him in a tomb? But yet he was standing right here at our house the same day. This was the same evening. They had just took him. He had just resurrected that morning. And the same evening, he's in the house of the uh, Cleopas and Mary in Emmaus. How did he do that? Some people will tell you, well, he must have been a magician. <laughs> no, he wasn't a magician. He wasn't a soothsayer. He was and he is. The very Son of God. Now the story would be good if we just stopped right there. Because that seven mile sermon, listen. Uh, we need some preachers to preach some seven and a half mile sermons. I don't know if you can stand it or not, but we need to hear it. It would burn, it would set our soul on fire. Yeah. If we could hear the word of God preached and hear how good God is and, and what he's done in your life and what he's done. Every one of us has a testimony here today. You weren't just a, a hatched out good, yeah. a good person. Yeah. You were born in the darkest yeah. sin, a sin nature on your life. But thanks be to God, yeah. he didn't leave you there. He brought you out of darkness into the light. He's the same Jesus that saved your wretched soul. Yeah. And he's still Jesus today. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and I today. Jesus disappeared. But go on down to that next paragraph. It said that Cleopas and Mary, they got up. It didn't say they straightened up the house. It didn't say they washed the dishes. It said they got up and ran seven and a half miles back to Jerusalem. Why? Because once you've been with Jesus, you've got to run and tell somebody. They ran back and found the disciples. <laughs> and they told them, we have been with Jesus today. And they're saying, yeah. yeah. So was we. Where did you see him? You see, Jesus... Once he resurrected, for 40 days, he appeared to over 500 people around Jerusalem. He wanted people to know that he's still alive. And as, this is this, it says, as they were standing there, telling the disciples what had just happened, as if Jesus thought maybe they didn't believe it. 
It says that he appeared yeah. again. Yeah. He came again to where they were. They're standing now. They're telling them about Jesus. Before, it was Jesus telling them about himself. Now, they're telling somebody else about how Jesus was in there. Isn't that the way salvation works? When Jesus comes into your life, we run to tell people about what he's done in our life. We should, anyway. If God has really saved you, you'll want to tell people. And so... It said he appeared. Then he does the same thing with those ten disciples. Mm -hmm. It says, let me show you who I am. And it said he showed them his pierced side. And he showed them his blood-stained hands. And said, touch me and feel me. I'm him. I'm Jesus. I'm not a spirit. I'm not a ghost. I am the Son of God. That's what he said. You check it out. You read it. Here, Cleopas and Mary had the greatest day of their life. They were, not only did they see Jesus once, but they saw him twice, and they saw the nail, same nail had scarred hands twice in their life. And folks, that's something to remember. If you ever get a picture of what Jesus did for you. You see, they realized when he told them what he was all about. They realized that he went to that cross just for them. Amen. And you must realize this morning that he did go to that cross just That's for right. you. He died for you, folks. Yeah. He shed his innocent blood yeah. so that you and I, he took all our sins past, present, and future and put them on himself so yeah. much so that God the Father couldn't even look down on him. He caused darkness to come over all that place so that he could not look upon sin. Your sin and my sin was hanging on that cross with Jesus. But aren't you glad today that Jesus Christ defeated death, hell, and the grave because he was resurrected on Sunday morning. Folks, listen to me. I get heartburned every once in a while because Jesus sets my soul on yeah. fire. He put some, he's put something inside of me 40 years ago that I cannot explain. I can't try to explain it away. I can't try to ignore it. When Jesus begins to speak to my heart, it's like he's down there with a little match and he's lighting that fire over and over and over again and it just keeps bubbling up. That fire comes up. Jeremiah said it showed up in my bones and it has to come out somewhere. I'm just like Jeremiah. When God's spirit begins to move inside of me, when he lives and he lives in me every day, but when he begins to stir my soul, soul. It's like something inside of me says I've got to come out. I can't stay in there. Yeah. And bless God, when the Spirit begins to move in you, you'll feel what I feel and it'll have to come out somewhere. Amen. The Spirit of God is real, folks. Yeah. Cleopas and Mary walked seven and a half miles home with Jesus right by their side and they never knew who he was until they begged him yeah. to come in. Listen to me. I heard an illustration being Floyd the other day, and I like that. This man, young man, and his wife, having their first child, they were in the birthing room, and I don't know how many of y'all men have been there, but it's kind of gross. <laughs> but the child is their first child it's born and the nurse takes the child and lays it on the mom's chest and they're just ooing and God and the dad he's scared to death he don't want to touch the baby he's afraid it'll break y'all know where I'm at there. Amen. so all of a sudden the young child, just born, <laughs> he poops all over mom. Y'all, I'm real now. Listen. 
And so the nurse says, well, let me help you. And she takes the baby and lays him over here in this plastic crate. And the dad's sitting there watching. And they begin to clean the mama. And the dad is looking at the baby. And all of a sudden, the baby starts screaming. He's crying his head off. And he looks at the nurse, and she's busy with mom. And she looks at him like, he says, <laughs> he stands there a minute and he said, I gotta do something. And now, listen, they ain't cleaned the baby up. He walks over finally, looks at it, and he says, I don't know if I can do this or not. And he reaches down in that crib and picks up that dirty baby, poop and all, and puts him on his chest. Now he's covered with all that stuff. But when he did, the baby quit crying because he was, and he spoke, he spoke to the child. And it was like that child knew his daddy's voice and he stopped crying. When he tried to lay him down, the child began to cry again. He picked him back up and the child stopped. It was like he knew his voice. Now listen to me. That's exactly the way you and I were. Yeah. When we yeah. were in our mess, we were dirty, yeah. and nasty, and yeah. filthy. But Jesus Christ came down and picked us up out of our crib and helped us yeah. until we learned yeah. his voice. Folks, listen yeah. to me today. He did die for you. You're his child. You're a mess, but he loves you anyway. Yeah. Let the fire of revival in your soul yeah. kindle again yeah. and know who Christ is. The fire in your soul may be just a little bit today. It might be. But I promise you, if you'll invite Jesus and constrain him to come into your house, this is your house, and walk with him just a mile or two, he'll show you who he is. Yeah. And before long, You'll see those nail-scarred hands. Yeah. You'll see those nail-scarred feet. And you'll see that his blood covers every sin Amen. that you have. Would you stand with this one? You come this morning. Maybe you need to walk just a little while with Jesus. Maybe he's been talking to you the whole time you've been sitting in this auditorium begging you to let him walk with you. Because you're on your road to Emmaus, whether you believe it or not. That road to Emmaus for Cleopas and Mary was going home. You and I are going home one day. I beg you this morning to let Jesus walk with you all the way home. He wants to walk with you. He's waiting on you to invite him in. Won't you invite him into your life today? Won't you let him take control of your heart and your life today? Oh, he's been waiting on you for a long time. Don't walk another mile without Jesus. I promise you, he promises you eternal life if you'll give your life to his. He'll give you life after this life. There's going to be a life after this life. There's going to be two choices. It's either heaven or hell for us. You need to be making up your mind today. Are you going to walk with Jesus or are you going to walk with the world and hold hands with the devil for the rest of your life? You better be walking with Jesus. You need him more than you realize. Oh, he did die. He did come out of that grave. Trust in Him. Let Him rekindle the fire in your soul this morning. This may not be a seven and a half mile sermon this morning, but I believe.
believe it was enough to convict your heart. If God's convicting you, He's speaking your heart right now. You need to let go of that chair. You need to come and surrender your life to Christ. Won't you come? Good to see you this morning. Hallelujah. 